Hey there, and welcome to my tutorial about how to draw tigers. If you know me just a little, you most likely know that I love cats, so I am very excited for this one. I have three fairly different drawings of tigers prepared, and I will show you all the basics you need to draw them. Alright, so let's start. Thank you. First of all, we are going to draw the very basic skeletal structure, starting with the head. You could start with a different part, of course. Here I just choose to start with the head. And I'm drawing this long oval shape that is tilted about 45 degrees. But the tiger is going to look straight forward. This is just the way the skull is orientated when they look forward. We draw the center lines to help us get the shape and orientation of the head right. Over here, we also half it. And if we would look at the shape directly from the front, then we would see that it basically is just like a circle. Then you go ahead and start a line directly from this intersection that has a very small angle right here and curves around. And that will be for the eyes. Slightly above this intersection, we draw a big triangle shape that is slightly stretched out, like so. A small line downwards, and then you have this upside down Y shape. Draw the shapes of the cheeks, very round, very round shapes that are connected with the nose. Then the chin down here, and we draw slightly over the oval shape of the head. We mostly stay inside, but sometimes you subtract a little bit, or you add some. For example, right about here. The nose bridge is fairly simple. You have a small curve and then simply go straight up until you connect with the eye line right here. Same on the other side. And those will be the positions of the eyes. I will add details later. Something optional would be to draw this kind of curve from the inner eye corner down the cheeks. It is not mandatory, but can help you to get the shape of the face right. As for the ears, we draw these curves that are almost parallel to the center line here, just slightly diverge. And all the way back here, we will have the inner corners of the ears. At first you draw an almost straight line, and then curve around. They are very round looking, not pointy. And we go all the way around, leave a small gap between the oval shape of the head and the ears, and we can also have a slight corner right here. And the other ear is pointing away from us, therefore it will have a more triangular shape to it, since we see the back side of the ear. We still need to slightly adjust the shape of the head, because first of all, we have a lot of muscles right here behind the jaw, also, the hair at the side of the face is very long. And so I draw this extra line here, which is almost horizontal, and curve upwards like so, right until we connect them with the middle of the ears. Let's draw the rest of the body, which will just be a relaxed standing position from the side, so you can see the whole body. In that kind of state, it is normal for the tiger to have its head the same height as the back. So let's draw the neck which starts at the back bottom of the head. And its length is shorter than the length of the head. That will be our general unit of length comparison. So we have a little bit extra here since we look at the head from the side after all. And this will help us get the proportions right. So about here would be the shoulders. And we draw the spine and be slightly curved. And we measure about two and a half lengths of the head. It of course doesn't have to be super exact, so right here is close enough. Let's continue with the front legs. The shoulder blades can move independently from each other, and therefore I have two lines that simplify these shoulder blades. They are shorter than the head length, and then we draw the upper legs. These ones are slightly longer, but still shorter than the head. And when they are standing straight up, so the foot would be directly under the shoulder, the shoulder blade would be angled forwards and the upper leg backwards, right down below this joint. And this way the chest looks like it's sticking out. 
Let's continue with the lower leg, which is about the same length as the upper leg bone. This will be the ankle, and therefore we have this middle part of the foot. And then the actual paw, which I simplify with a simple line. The other leg too, of course, which I'm going to add in very quickly, right here. And we also want to keep the perspective in mind. So this will be our eye level, and therefore there will be a small gap right here at the bottom. What you can also do is add a rib cage from the knees all the way up towards the spine. And it doesn't have to be a very nice looking shape, it is just an aid to get the general shape of the body right. Now let's move on to the back legs. At first we draw the hip, which can be simplified with a simple curve right here. The hip bone is one singular bone, therefore the both sides cannot move independently from each other. If you look at the skeleton from above, you can see that the hip and the shoulders aren't that large in width. So this here will be our relevant joint. And since we now know where the ground level is, we can basically construct back legs from the feet. So let me draw this line here from the hips. And I'm gonna say that the leg that is closer to us will be in front of this line and the other one further at the back. In order to draw this middle part of the foot, all we need to know is the position in relation to the hip. The further it is at the front, the smaller this angle becomes. And so on this side here, it will be much more vertical. Also if you compare it to the front, these bones are slightly longer and we let it reach over the joints just a little bit. And then it becomes a simple matter of connecting the dots. The only thing you need to remember is that the length of the upper and lower legs are the same as the head length. And so, you just kind of guess the correct positions. And there we go. From a standing position like this, the back legs are mostly stretched out. Not all the way, but mostly. And last but not least, the tail. It is just a continuous curve from the spine. In a relaxed state, it just hangs down and often curves around right here at the tip. And its total length is about 2 to 2.5 times the head length. I have the in-between steps also prepared beforehand, just to make sure that I have good looking and accurate results. Now let's get to the second stage of the sketch. Where you start at is completely up to you. I like to start with the nose. And here we have these two curves going down like so, a small distance until we have this corner curving around and when it gets very close to the edge of the triangle, you add this S curve all the way to this corner here and there we go. Then you make everything dark and these shades here stretch all the way up here because there is still a small gap. The same on the other side but significantly narrower like so. And of course don't forget to add this middle line. The upper edge starts right in between the nostril and this corner. And there is not much of distance between the nostrils and that edge. And the overall shape is just this kind of slight wave. Like so. Let's continue with the mouth. Again, just a upside down Y shape. You can fill in a little bit of a dark area to have a slight indication of the lips and then mostly just follow the shapes that we already sketched out. But we stop right here, this will be the mouth corner and we can have slight indications of the shape of the cheeks. The chin will have a slight curve inwards right here and then the chin hair itself looks a bit scruffier, has a few long hairs. Let's draw this nose bridge all the way to the back. And this side here mostly stays open. <laughs> to draw the eyes, what you can do is start with the upper lid. The curvature depends on how widely open the eyes are and also the general shape, which is slightly different from tiger to tiger, of course. So here I'm drawing it very relaxed and therefore it's fairly flat. Then add a cut off circle for the eyes themselves with a round pupil. It is not slit shaped unlike the small cats. The lower lid is just like a dark outline 
it curves inwards like so. And we have this dark part that stretches over this line here. All the way like so. And also a bit more detail on the other side. And there you go, you have the eye. The same thing on the other side, but it will be cut off by the nose bridge, of course. Like so. Don't forget the pupil. Let's sketch out the shape of the head for the most part, just following mostly what we already sketched out. The ears also don't really change that much. At this stage you can make some corrections, add a little bit more detail. But overall, there isn't much to do here. However, there will be of course the long hair inside the ears. And right where it gets deep, we want to have some dark darker parts right here. The top of the head is mostly flat, there can be some dents, it is up to you how you want to design it. And starting from the ears, here at the side of the face you will have the long hair, which will droop down the further it is at the bottom. Of course don't forget the whiskers, you have these rows of dots right underneath the nostrils from where the whiskers grew out of. There are normally three of them, but here and there there can be some extra dots too. And then the whiskers themselves. Since this tiger is very relaxed, they are just mostly hanging down in other emotional states that can be different and make it a bit chaotic. A few of them will curve upwards or can be a bit messed up since they are wild animals and therefore not everything is neat and tidy about them, of course. And above the eyes you also have a few of these kind of long hair. Normally you don't really see them, at least not that much, but they give the face a bit extra detail. Let's move on to the body once more, and with which part you start with, once again, is up to you. I like to start with the feet at first. And for those, you draw this kind of flat oval shapes like so. There isn't really much additional detail to them, at least from a standing position like this. We just have these indications of the toes. Then I work myself upwards, from joint to joint. And the individual parts will get wider and wider. And overall, make sure that you draw the tiger very muscular. They are the largest cats and basically the strongest cats in the world. So draw them fairly broad. Also all the way up here to the shoulders. And the shoulders can stick out quite significantly in comparison to the back. It depends on how the weight is distributed on the front legs. So if a lot of weight is on just one leg, then the shoulder blade will stick out quite significantly. And I will sketch in the other leg too, fairly quickly. Now, there is one thing that you still need to consider, which are, first of all, the carpal pad right at the back of the feet, underneath the ankle, and also the dew claw right here on the inner side of the foot, but only for the front legs. Only the front legs have the carpal pads and the dew claws. And then the rest is basically the same. Because this leg is mostly hidden behind the torso, I don't need to draw the rest. Continuing with the back legs, it just works the same way. Have these flat oval shapes with slight indications for the toes. And then here we have this kind of narrow looking shape. And as for the lower leg, what we do is we at first curve around the knee, like so. And you can imagine that you have more of a circular shape sitting right here, and we draw an S-curve around it, down towards the ankle right here. And this will give you this corner. And the rest, once again, is fairly simple. You just wrap around the joints. And there we go. I skipped ahead and threw the other one too, it works the same way so I don't need to explain much. One thing that you still have to consider however is that this part here should be smooth, there shouldn't be a corner like this. 
Let's construct a neck. At first here, from the top of the head to the shoulders, and then from the chest behind the jaw. So the shoulders are sticking out quite significantly, there's this mountain of muscles, and it slowly curves downwards until we reconnect with the curvature of the spine once again. We have a small hill maybe here on the on the hip side, which then very slightly curves down. We have this downwards slope. We do not draw it perfectly horizontal. And then it will transition over Heihoko to the tail. And the base of the tail, the root of the tail, is fairly wide. Is Hoko. Just follow the curvature of the of the tail. Um, the tail is not very fluffy, therefore it is also not very wide. So it narrows down like so. And then at the tip we just have a round curve, like so. Only thing remaining is the chest and the belly. Here we start from the knees, mostly follow the shape of the ribcage. And you can also have a line continuing from the knee upwards and have maybe a slight corner. And then the belly itself, of course, will depend on how well fed the tiger is. So it could be curved up like so and that doesn't look very healthy, of course. Or it could be a bit too much. But in a normal state, you will have a slightly sagging stomach, like so. And just one little extra detail is a line from the knee that curves in front of the stomach. And once again, the prepared version, just to make sure that I get the proportions right. The last thing missing in our sketch is obviously the stripes. Those give the tigers their signature look after all. Every single tiger has a unique set of stripes, just like your fingerprints. Therefore, you have a lot of freedom drawing these stripes. To some extent, there are certain rules. The curvature, thickness, density and shape depends on the body part they are on top of. And of course, I will do my best to explain the important basics to you. A few tips for drawing the stripes. At first, draw them a bit jittery following the direction of the fur and make it kind of random instead of just drawing one smooth line. Instead of making it one continuous stripe, bring in some gaps in between, here and there, and also vary the thickness. Again, where you start doesn't really matter. I'm gonna start right here behind the cheeks and follow this curvature that we had before. At the mouth corner you have a big dark spot, kind of like a half circle that curves down the jaw. And that is actually very common for big cats. Now from here, I want to curve upwards towards the outer eye corner. And so, I'm just gonna connect it right here. And do it in a very random way. And often, it is directly connected with the corner of the eye. Drop in here and there are some smaller stripes and spots too. Right here at the corner of the nose, you often have some small little spots too. Underneath the eyes, we have another round stripe that leaves a small gap in between, which will be white. And you can add a few extra lines here and there too. And you need to draw the same pattern on the other side too. So don't forget about that. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, because it isn't perfect in nature either, but it still should be more or less the same pattern. Then from this eye corner we curve upwards, which also continues right above the eyes, like so. Not all of them gonna perfectly follow the curvature, of course, though. So, make it a bit random. In between the eyes, the density of stripes isn't very high, or sometimes there are none at all. You just drop in a few spots and lines here and there. And as for the forehead, you just simply need to remember two rules. First of all, the lines are mostly horizontal and stretch over the whole forehead. And additionally, they converge towards the middle of the forehead, along this line here. So what you do is, you drop in here and there some smaller lines that are symmetric, 
then some of them that stretch over the whole forehead, and then you have these arrow shapes that follow the forehead all the way to the back. And you can combine these shapes, it can be very creative and very random, it's completely up to you. I'm just gonna fill in everything very quickly, like so. And there we go. On the ears, you also often have some spots that are fairly large. Almost looks like there are white spots on black ears. And here at the side of the face, we have very broad, thick lines that stretch all the way down to the jaw. Like so. And that is mostly it. There isn't much else. Maybe here and there are a few spots, but the area on the nose, on the cheeks, which are just basically those dots, or the whiskers, and the chin, and also here, right between the eyes and the mouth, are normally without any stripes whatsoever. The stripes on the body are actually far less complicated. As a general rule, you can remember that the stripes always wrap around the body parts. So for example, here in the middle of the body, we start from the spine and curve slightly, we don't go straight down and wrap around the whole torso. You don't have to draw the whole line continuously, but once again you have some abrupt interruptions in there and you just can drop in a few lines here and there right in the middle. Also, the stripes are very thick and can have these splits around the belly, it can get quite blotchy with a lot of very thick spots and lines. What are you doing? And the same goes for the legs too. As you can see here, they wrap around the legs and therefore these spots are horizontal. However, the area between the legs and the torso require a little bit more thinking. You can imagine some sort of delta right here and we will have stripes follow three different directions. So up here we will have the stripes from the shoulders curving down from the spine as normal, but then once they get close to this delta, they have to split up. Those that are further to the front will curve towards the chest. Those that are further to the back will curve towards the knee. And the lines in between are just gonna mingle together and you can find your own kind of individual, unique solution in order to fill out this area. The same goes for the back leg too, you have also this kind of delta. So some lines will grow towards the knee, some will grow towards the back of the leg, and you have the horizontal ones that are just wrapping around the leg. And so once again you fill out the in-between area as you see fit. It is completely up to you how you do it. The front legs don't really have that many stripes and are fairly thin. Especially at the inner side, you just have here and there some lines showing up from the sides and a few thin ones here and there in the middle. The feet and the lower part of the legs basically remain completely empty with stripes. Back legs are higher in density in terms of stripes. But once again, as they are getting close to the lower part of the leg, they are just simply diminishing to the point where there are none at all. The density of stripes that are approaching the behind of the tiger are also very very high and there are a lot of thick stripes. And once they are approaching the tail, they are transitioning to wrapping around that sad tail. The tip of the tail is just simply all black, as if it has been dipped into a bottle of ink. <laughs> and the stripes directly behind the tip are very thick and quite close to each other. But as the distance increases from the tip, so do also the stripes be more further apart and the lines will become thinner and thinner and vary the shape of the lines too. Sometimes they are just these short ones. You have some splits here and there and also the thickness varies. And there we go. In my prepared version here I have the whole body covered and I took a bit of extra time to make sure that it looks nice. 
The stripes are also very useful in order to illustrate the shape of the body of this tiger. So when you paint them, also keep in mind how the tiger is shaped. And of course, I also show you the finished version. As always, the style you draw your tiger in is up to you, so I'm not going to go too much into detail. Some important things that I need to address are the fur length and color. The fur on their body isn't all that long, except for maybe a Siberian tiger. The longest fur is at the side of their face, which progressively gets shorter towards the neck, and the belly is a bit scruffier too. The colors are basically just black, white, and orange. There aren't even that many shades of orange. The white parts are basically on the following areas. Around the eyes with fairly sharp edges, the cheeks under the nose, the chin, and the sides of the face. By the way, there are a few darker spots in the front directly under the mouth. The underside of the neck and the belly are white too. The inner side of the legs as well as the underside of the feet and the toes. And the tail is mostly white and black. Some orange from the back stretches a distance along the upper side of the tail though. Additionally, what you should do for animals that have short fur like these tigers is to indicate the shape of the muscles and some joints underneath the skin. For example, the ankles of the back legs or the strong shoulders. With the help of shading and highlighting, you can make these parts stick out. So those are the basics which you can use to draw tigers in basically any pose that you want. I have a second example for you in a more interesting pose than this one here. And it is a tiger cub playing around, so extra cute. I will show you a time lapse of its drawing process, while in the meantime, I'm going to tell you a couple of interesting facts about tigers. Tigers are the largest cat species and the third largest land carnivores in the world. Only polar and brown bears are larger. Unlike most cats, tigers are good swimmers and don't shy away from getting wet. They have webbed toes, which allow them to push back larger volumes of water. The natural habitats reach from the ice-cold Siberian forests to the hot jungles of India and Sumatra. About 100 years ago, the tiger population worldwide was over 100,000. However, because of deforestation, trophy hunting and people using body parts of tigers as traditional medicine, which in reality just works as placebos anyways, tigers' numbers have shrunk down dramatically. Now in the year 2019, there are less than 4,000 tigers in the wild. Every single tiger subspecies is on the brink of extinction. A multiple of that number lives in captivity worldwide. However, the vast majority of them serve no conservation purpose at all. It is estimated that just in the US, there are 5 to 10,000 tigers in captivity. The estimate is so broad because a lot of them are unreported. Several states have barely to no regulations at all for keeping tigers. Sometimes it's even harder to get a cat from an animal shelter than to have a tiger as a pet, although they are clearly not domestic animals. Many of these tigers are in roadside entertainment. They are used for shows, mini safaris and photo ops. Especially popular are the tiger cubs. Tourists love bottle feeding and cuddling with them. And I admit, I would love that too. It would feel immensely special to me to be that close to a real tiger. However, the conditions under which they are often held changes how I feel about it. As babies, they are often taken away from the mothers far too early. Once they reach adulthood, many tigers lose their value and are just put up for display, used for further breeding, or somehow disappear. Their body parts are still quite valuable. Additionally, thousands of tigers in East and Southeast Asia are in farms, held under horrible conditions. The situation for these majestic creatures is really saddening. Alright, let's pause this depressing topic and get back to the drawing. The basic anatomy for a tiger cub is not all the different to an adult tiger. The main difference is the size ratio between the head, legs and torso. The legs are a bit shorter, especially for really young ones. The head is larger in comparison to the rest of the body. The eyes are also proportionally large, once they are able to fully open them, that is. Their ears also appear larger, while the cheeks are slightly smaller. 
Also, from this angle you are able to see the underside of the front paw. The paw pads are quite large and usually have a somewhat dark color. A simple way to draw the feet is to use ovals within ovals. At first to sketch out the orientation of the toe and then for the paw pad. The biggest one in the middle has a more complicated shape. But you can imagine an extremely fat M shape that stretches out at the sides, if that makes sense. And then you have the claws, which simply stick out from the middle of the toes, are curved and very pointy. If you want to draw the mouth open, draw it first some kind of S shape down towards the mouth corner. Make a sharp turn and go towards the front again. Be careful not to draw the jaw too long or too short. The canines are huge, sitting on their own kind of mounds. These plus the incisors at the front are the first teeth to show up when they open their mouths. So I am not completely done. As promised, I have another drawing and this one is more special than just a simple pose because not only does it show a beautiful and slightly derpy looking tiger, but also my two cats as little kittens. Obviously, in reality that would be way too dangerous, but you are able to draw whatever alternate reality you can imagine. That's the special thing about art for me. As a side note, I also made a tutorial series about house cats with a video solely about kittens. I am glad to finally have brought you a drawing tutorial about tigers. They are among my absolute favorites after all. This tutorial by the way is part of a series about big cats. The next ones are going to be lions, snow leopards and cheetahs. I'm definitely very excited for those too. And I'm sorry for potentially souring your mood by bringing up that serious topic during the time lapse. But can we agree that this is a problem that needs far more attention? Also, do me a favor. When you draw your own tigers, please don't portray them as monstrous man killers. As artist, you have a way to move people's hearts. You can bring more awareness to certain issues and inspire them to protect what is good and pure in this world. So bring out the beauty of these fascinating wild cats. As always, if you have any questions or constructive feedback, then please leave a comment down below. And for more information and links, please check out the description of this video. There is quite a lot in there. Alright then, have fun drawing.